final film I watched this week was The Man Who Never Was, the 1956 World War II drama thriller uh, based on real events and directed by Ronald Neame. It's the true story of Operation Mincemeat, a strategy that was developed by naval intelligence to uh, suggest to the Nazi high command that the widely expected uh, invasion of Sicily and thus into southern Europe was actually going to be taking place through Greece. And their plan on seeding this disinformation was to locate a dead body and plant on the body various uh, documents that would suggest that the Greek plan was going ahead and also various other odds and ends to, to imply that this was a real naval officer. The body was then dropped in the sea off Spain. Uh, it uh, swept on shore and the Nazi high command took possession of the documents before returning them in apparently unopened uh, condition, although it turned out that they in fact had, and the information was thus seeded and uh, military uh, ordinance was diverted away from Sicily. The film takes a very uh, thriller-based uh, attitude to this, but also a very human one, which I was very surprised by when it unfolded the way it did. Um, although much the first part of the story is the development of the plan and coming up with all the various ways it could go wrong, trying to uh, come up with as much authenticity in the various um, pocket debris that uh, the uh, the dead body would have, named William Martin, as it's felt to be a suitably uh, appropriate name. Um, there's also the question of finding the body, because obviously the person has to have recently died. They have to have died from something that could, from a forensic examination, pass for having been drowning. So this limits the pool. And eventually they manage to find someone with uh, you, uh, Commander Ewan Montague, the uh, advisor of the plan, talking the man's only next of kin, his father, into donating his body for a greater purpose. Although one of the conditions is that the man, dead man's identity is never known. It has now been uh, established. You can look it up. Um, he was uh, an unfortunate person who was unable to achieve very much in life, but in death, <laughs> potentially changed the course of the war and allowed the invasion of Europe by the Allied forces. Um, another element of the story that I was expecting just to be fluff, for the uh, sake of women in the audience, is a romantic subplot. Uh, Ewan's, Ewan Montague's uh, secretary has a flatmate, played by a uh, big name American actress, Gloria Graham, who was based in the UK at the time. Uh, her boyfriend is played by William Russell, uh, who died earlier this year, better known for being one of the original cast of Doctor Who. And he is a pilot. And at one point, um, the team are tasked with writing a love letter that um, Martin would have in his pocket from his girlfriend. And the secretary struggles. She doesn't have anything like that in her life. So he takes dictation from her flatmate, who writes a love letter. And this relationship winds up becoming important in the second half of the film, where in an entirely fictional move, we have an Irish spy working for the German Secret Service, operating in the UK and investigating the background to Martin to establish whether or not he's genuine. He hits a, a variety of dead ends that are inconclusive, but he eventually locates the origin of the love letter and finds the uh, girlfriend just as she's had terrible news. So the uh, reveal that uh, she's brokenhearted and beside herself with grief at the death of her boyfriend matches with uh, that boyfriend potentially being Martin himself. It's a very impressive film. It's a very fine thriller, well constructed. It's almost like a heist story and the, the plotting of the crime, the execution of the crime, then the fallout from it as they're investigated and try and evade the um, uh, the policing forces of the German Secret Service. That section, I would say, is entirely fictional. I did a little research of my own and discovered that the entire German spy network in the UK in World War II was compromised. Every single agent was a double agent and had been turned or simply volunteered to go over to working under naval intelligence, which is uh, rather cheering. It shows that even those for whom their loyalty lies only in money will still <laughs> turn to be side of good when presented with the sufficient uh, encouragement. Um, 
But uh, overall, I, I, I really enjoyed it. It's got a very impressive, very broad cast. Clifton Webb, I thought, as Montague was very good. There's a, a broad supporting range of characters. Um, and um, it felt very authentic, very real. It's, Montague himself was a, a source during production and within the boundaries of what was um, acceptable in terms of um, uh, passing on espionage knowledge, it was authentic. And it's just a shame that we have that second half with the, the Irish spy, which is, as I say, entirely fictional. But it makes for a fine story. And I overall enjoyed it a great deal. It's one of the stranger stories of World War II. But it's a fascinating one to see recounted.